Now this is going to be the trickiest part about installing a backlight. We'll want to peel off the polarizer layer as well as the foil layer behind the LCD glass all in one go. So what you'll be wanting to do is you want to grab a brand new uh, razor blade and you want to start out at a corner. I like using this outer corner and what we'll be doing is that we'll be cutting in at an angle starting with the edge of the glass into the side of the screen and we'll be wanting to cut into it and get a nice little notch going. Now if you've done this correctly you'll be able to pull off the polarizer film as well as the reflective film all in one go. Now you'll want to take your time and be very delicate with this because if you are too rough with it you could damage the bottom ribbon cable as well as the side ribbon cable and if you go too fast in removing the film you could be leaving uh, residue behind on the glass screen which is fairly difficult to remove. And there you go, you have removed the polarizer as well as the reflective film all in one go from the LCD screen. Now if you've done this correctly, the LCD screen should look uh, generally clear and it shouldn't have any tinges of green. If you have only removed the foil layer, uh, I believe the screen comes out uh, a, a tinge of green and the foil layer comes off super easy compared to the polarizer layer. So what you want to do at this point is you want to clean off the back of the screen and make sure that there is no dust or no residue left over. What I like using is some q-tips and rubbing alcohol. Okay so let's start cleaning the back of the LCD glass. Now I don't know how well you can see it here but there is a bit of residue left here in the corner from where we started cutting. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the razor blade, we're going to dip it in some rubbing alcohol, and then we're going to carefully scratch off, uh, work off the residue underneath. And I found that this is the easiest way to removing residue from behind the LCD screen. Just be very careful you don't cut into the ribbon cable or uh, scratch the glass. Now after that we'll be using our q-tips and rubbing alcohol and cleaning the back of the glass once again. After we are done cleaning off the back side of the LCD panel, what we want to do next is install the ASM Electronics Triforce LED backlight. Here we have our backlight. Uh, the polarization film on it is inverted because we are doing a bi version. I'll explain more in part 3. Now, once we have the backlight, what we want to do is we want to peel off the protective film that is on the front of the backlight. Make sure there is no dust on, this, on the backlight as you slide it behind the screen. Now, after you're done with that, we're going to be wanting to screw in the Phillips head screws at the bottom of the LCD panel. But before we do that, the wires that are sticking out, make sure that the colored wire is sticking out on the left side, while the black wire is sticking out on the right side. Be very careful when you're putting these screws back in because they are very easy to strip out. Once you're done with that, we are going to be cutting down the wires. I like to hold the wires straight down and cut them off just after the capacitor. After you do that, we want to strip off a little bit of the ends of the wires so that we have exposed wires sticking out. Now this is what it should look like once you are done shortening the wires and stripping off the ends to expose uh, the, bare, the bare wires. What we want to do next is we want to solder the ends of the wires to tin them so it's easier for them to solder to the points that we want them to solder to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wire up the backlight and we're going to be taking the colored wire which is the positive wire and we're going to be soldering it to this point here just left of the capacitor for power 
and we're going to be soldering the black wire, which is ground, to this point here, to the right of the capacitor. So this might get a little tricky, so I like using tweezers to uh, help move the wires into place so I can solder them. So after you're done, this is what it should look like. And next we're going to be testing the backlight and seeing if it turns on. So what we'll be doing is we'll be grabbing our back PCB. We'll be plugging in the ribbon cable to the back PCB from the front PCB. And we're just going to be doing it in reverse order, making sure that the ribbon cable lines up with the slot. And then we're going to be gently pushing it in. It should pop in no problem. We're going to be grabbing an AC adapter for the DMG01, plugging it into the AC adapter port. And if all is well, this should be turning on. And there you go. You have successfully backlit a DMG01 original Game Boy. Congratulations, you have completed part two of this five part series on how to modify your DMG01 original Game Boy for chiptune music production. This episode's chiptune spotlight is on chiptune artist Spacetown Savior. He has been producing chiptune music since 2010. He currently uses LSDJ for music composition as well as a Behringer mixer and Korg KP3 effects processor for music production and for his live performances. He has been performing live here in San Diego for a little over a year now and has performed at venues such as Obsolete Los Angeles as well as venues in Northern California. I'll have links in the description below to his Bandcamp page as well as the Obsolete Los Angeles website. Stay tuned for part 3 of this 5 part series on how to modify your DMG01 original Game Boy for chiptune music production. In part 3 I'll be going over biverting your DMG01 Game Boy with a 74HC04 Bivert chip as well as relocating the power supply circuit board. That concludes this video. Thank you all very much for watching and remember, go out there and do great things.